Welcome to Brew with Miss Baritone. I'm your host, Chicky Baritone, and this is my podcast. I'm going to give it to you all black, no crema, no sugar, no honey. So join me as I brew up some life-giving conversations with some dope people. Welcome to Brew with Miss Baritone. I'm very excited about my next guest. He is the founder of All Dreams. Please welcome Hassan to the podcast. Thank you. Thank What's you so up? much. How are you doing? I'm well. I'm well. Thanks for having me. I am honored I to have you. you. I yeah. appreciate you. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about Hassan before we get into this awesome organization called okay. All Dreams. Where are you originally from? So I am from Buffalo, New York. Really? Yeah, upstate New York. It's not New York City. Anybody from New York City <laughs> will say Buffalo is not New York, but we are New York. That's we right. Just, you know, I just can look across the the, the, the lake and see Canada. <laughs> right. But, but yeah, I'm from Buffalo, New York. Wow. And how have you migrated down south? Mm-hmm. You you live here in Atlanta now? So I, I don't live here in Atlanta. And 2022 this year has been a, a crazy year for me. Wow. I actually moved from Atlanta in okay. May. Okay. After being here from 2016. And uh, now I actually live in Columbia. Like the country. Wow, Car- the country. Yeah, the country. I was about to say Columbia, South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. the country. So I, <laughs> the yeah, country, right, yeah. Columbia. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I'm based right now in Cartagena, Colombia. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. And how has your experience been living there so far? I'm just really curious. Um, do you speak fluent, the fluent native language? You know, Paquito. how is Paquito. Paquito. Okay, that's right. Um, but, <laughs> I'm, but I'm learning, you know, I, I, more? I, yeah, I'm, 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 I learn every day, right? Absolutely. I learn every day. But yeah, so uh, living there, I wanted to live somewhere warm Mm. and Florida was a little bit too expensive. So the reason why I moved to Columbia is because I was living in Buckhead and my expenses were very, very high Mm -hmm. and I want to really build a business. So I wanted to get rid of my expenses and live lower than my means so I can actually really build a company. So I wanted to have nothing. I didn't want to have things like sneakers. I didn't want to have uh, go out on dates, all of these things where I had this high overhead. I wanted to just downgrade everything so I can put my all focus on my purpose and growing a company. So I was able, I'm able to live on the beach for like a thousand dollars a month. And that's, more of the reason why I was living in Buckhead and my expenses were so high. So I didn't care about a car. I didn't care about the things that most people care about. I just wanted to get rid of everything and go after building a brand. Wow. That is incredible. And it takes a certain kind of person. I mean, it really takes number one, your heart to be in the right place to make such a sacrifice. And at that, at the end of the day, even though people hear that and they like, ah, oh, I could never do that. Right. When you believe in something, yeah. you literally will be surprised at the things that you will give up in order to make that purpose come to pass. Right. That's incredible. And I'm glad that you mentioned that because somebody listening right now needs that extra little snug, that extra little push. You know, and and to some people that might seem extreme, but to somebody listening, that was exactly what they needed to hear. So, wow, thank Uh, you for sharing that. And it does, it it makes me think, dang, when somebody puts that kind of energy and time and heart into a brand, it is more than just a brand. It's more than just a business. It's literally your life. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it it is. And it's it's more purpose and it's more about, the contribution that I want to put into the world. And it's still a lot of sacrifice because I have, I have daughters as well, you know, but it was more about just not wanting a lifestyle. So Mm. people want a lifestyle and I just wanted to give up a lifestyle in order to go after purpose and contribution. Right. And that was, the main, that was the main goal. I don't want all of this. I wasn't even happy as I was staying in the condo. I wasn't happy. Wow, wow. <laughs> you know, wow. it's like, it's like you, you know, you, yep. like when I talk about dreams, like, oh, I have the dream. I have this dream place. This is my dream place. But I, what contribution am I making 
to the world. If something happens to me, I have all these things to say I, 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 I passed away. I have all these things. Right, right. What are they gonna, where are they going to go, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> Somebody, you know, my mother's going to take them and put them in a room and say, oh, I miss my kid, you know? Yeah. But they had no meaning. So I wanted to go after contribution and have my daughters watch that. And that's one of the examples that I can give to them and put contributions to the world. <laughs> Sorry. That's, what, that's, that's a <laughs> Sorry. dope perspective, though. That's <laughs> a real dope perspective. Um, so all dreams literally started from a journey with five children. Yeah. yeah. Four were with cancer mm -hmm. and one child was dealing with cerebral palsy, right? Yeah. yeah. Please tell me the story behind that. Ah, okay. So I'll take you back just a, a tad bit further than okay. the kids, right? Right. Um, growing up in Buffalo, it's a very, it's an impoverished city. It's like one of those cities that was thriving during the time of steel and like, you know, like one of those cities that's like Midwest that were thriving during like the 60s where everybody yeah. could go and get jobs. How Detroit was thriving mm -hmm. with the yep. with the car with the industry. Car industry. industry. Yeah. Right. And then all of that kind of stopped and the city just became real desolate. It's very cold. So it's not a destination people want to actually come, right. but they were coming for jobs. Gotcha. So growing up on the east side of Buffalo, you have a couple things to do. Um, you can get in trouble, you can <laughs> play sports, um, or you can just be a person that kind of gets a job or whatever and goes to school, right? Mm -hmm. I just happened to be six foot six and left-handed and very athletic. And basketball kind of saved my life from the streets, to mm -hmm. be honest with you, because yeah. Starting out, that was the path that I was going, being from my neighborhood. Like it, the, the influence wasn't stay out of the streets and play basketball. The mm -hmm. influence was no bad. Who cares about sports? You should be doing street stuff. Right. And and oddly enough, like it's not like I come from a home where it's a broken home. Wow. I had both of my parents in my life, but they just worked a lot. Like my mother was a nurse when I growing up, my dad was a plumber. So I had all of this idle time to mm. just be in the neighborhood, yeah. mingling with these, <laughs> you know, these different people mm -hmm. that's not telling me, yo, stay away from this stuff, go after sports. So I wound up getting in trouble at 15. But like I said, I just happened to be six foot six in a left-handed guard that can dribble and shoot and very, very athletic. And, um, that led my path mm. all the way to being able to leave Buffalo. I did not have the grades to go to a Division One college at first. I went to a junior college in South Carolina. Okay. After that, uh, I went to Bethune Cookman for a year. Okay. Still struggled academically, so I still came up one one class short again. But basketball saved me again. Mm. <laughs> basketball saved me again. Dropped out and hired an agent. The next year, mm. went to Argentina and, and signed a contract playing pro. Still had three years to play basketball in college, so I still was not a professional basketball player, for se, like mm -hmm. the, probably the best that I could have been. Sure. Mid-season, I get cut. My mm. life spirals out of control. I go back to Buffalo, wow. get with the same people that, you know, mm -hmm. get in trouble and go to prison for 14 months wow come home and i wanted to do a tv show okay right the tv show that i wanted to do was called swag university what i did is is i bought time on air and then i sold spot advertising yeah. slots or whatever yeah. so kodak was actually the first people to give me a chance hmm. Um, this is around the time where they had these easy share cameras and yes. Drake was on, uh, they had Trey, Trey songs, Drake, Rihanna, it was these big commercials that was on BET. Okay. So I seen that, made like a little clip that, you know, you should advertise your cameras. They gave me 25 grand. Wow. So that was the, so that started the production. Then I hired a mini celebrity at the time, but she's a big celebrity now. Okay. Uh, her name was Amanda Seals. Yes. Right? Yep. And she was my co-host and we did... We did a pilot first, and then we did a few more episodes or whatever of Swag University. Okay. And that show was based off of 
giving young people makeovers for events they had coming up. So the vision was to go to different universities and we would compete who could get the best swag over, right? Okay. After four episodes, show runs out of money. And for the fifth episode, I couldn't hire her anymore to do more. So I hired a football, I didn't hire a football player. I pitched a football player for the Buffalo Bills and said, yo, let's go to this school and give a player a mm -hmm. makeover and let's give a coach a makeover, right? Wow. okay. <laughs> so the player, we're going to make him over for his college interview. So we put him in a suit. Coach, coaches don't have swag per se at the time, <laughs> right? So I'm right. going to swag up the coach or whatever. Yeah. So this opened my mind to different ways to create, right? Wow. And because I didn't have the money to hire a host or whatever, but I still wanted to continue. And that's when we get to the point where I, on the last episode of Swag University, I meet Jason, which was a kid that was battling cancer. Wow. That's, so that's how, that's how that started. And I just, the idea was I just wanted to give a kid with cancer and his family a fresh start holiday surprise. Wow. And that's where the real journey starts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. That is incredible. Sorry I'm so long. -winded. No, no, no. <laughs> that's all of that was necessary and needed. So this kicks off the vision for all dreams. Right. And all dreams is based. So you, you get this vision, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long have you been doing all dreams and right. where is all dreams now in reference to uh, where you initially started the vision okay. and kind of where you see it going? Uh, so it wasn't all dreams. It was still Swag University. And okay. So it was still something else. So all dreams officially like became a company in uh, April of 2021. Okay. So what I did is I went on this journey meeting these five kids. Jason was the first one. Okay. And uh, we helped him. We did four days. We, I brought a friend of mine that played for the Buffalo Sabres to his house. Excuse me. And um, what we did is we, I surprised him. So just imagine if a, a player from yeah. the NHL or whatever comes to your house. Like. Right. So we surprised him, did that. Second day, we took him to a game, VIP. He got to meet his favorite players and things like that. Nice. The third day, um, I came back and made over his room and Sabre's room or whatever. So at the same time, like I'm also finding out about partnerships with mm. different foundations because the foundation had to find Jason partnership with my friend that played for the Sabres and then also the team, the Sabres, right? Right. So we did that and I said, it's something here. And in the interview session, I wore this hoodie, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That had an elephant with shades. It was, it, it's not this design, it was the first design. Okay. And the symbolization of the elephant was the stories that I'm telling are the elephant in the room. At this time, it was the elephant in the room of America. Wow. Because his story, if we didn't meet, um, I don't believe the story would have been told, right? Right. So I said, it's something here, and I couldn't sleep. I said, it's, it's something here. And the makeover stuff was great. It was cool because, right. you know, um, people were actually, I was seeing people transform. They were going from not having confidence to confidence. But this was something else. Mm. Like, this was something else. This was something I said, there's no way in the world I've been through what I've been through to get here to meet a kid battling cancer and telling his story. Yeah. So I said, something here, this is something from God. It has to be, it has to be. Mm -hmm. So when I put that out and I wore this elephant, this, this royal blue elephant uh, hoodie, it was a royal blue hoodie with a pink elephant that had shades on it. Yeah. When I put the episode out, this was, this was what I was wearing in the interview session. People say, yo, what is that elephant? And they started buying the elephant. And yes. that's how I, I continued. And then also people say, I need you to meet this kid. So then I met Jarrell, which was a kid battling brain tumors. Somebody said, you need to meet this kid, which was Tafik that had cerebral palsy. Mm. And that's how it started. And, and it went so on and so forth. For, it started in 2011. I completed a documentary about this whole journey called wow. We All Have Dreams in 2022, and that's when I launched All Dreams. Wow. Yeah. Let me tell you, the elephant is such a catcher, and it, it does have uh, a different meaning for everybody. So when I saw you and saw the elephant, immediately I thought of my mom, who's no longer here, who died 11 years ago, so but loved elephants. And she was not a Delta. 
but she loved the strength of elephants. It was it was a symbolism of the elephants that she just related to. So right. our house had elephants all over the place. Get out of here. Yeah. So when I saw <laughs> it immediately, I had to have it. I had to have the hoodie without even knowing right. the story behind it, which is worth listening to and hearing. Right. So this is really awesome how this has all been birthed and how this image represents. And it's such a, a, a similar saying, the elephant in the room. People love to, to say that. And it can, it can take on so many different connotations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It, it's, it's really real. I mean, you know, even in, uh, it's this, like I said, when I, it's 2011 when it started. But if, like today, I think it's, it's more relevant than ever. Yeah. You know, yep. the elephant in the room, like everybody's walking, this thing is in the room or in the world and people are just walking around it yep. and not and, and not addressing yep. you know not addressing it and it's so important stories are you know so important because you have a story somebody's going to relate to that story and right. somebody's going to pull something out of that story so it's essential to have different stories that we can tell and bring to and, and to highlight, and that's what one of the things that I wanted to do with All Dreams is highlight these stories, you know, highlight stories of Tafik, a kid with cerebral palsy, highlight stories about Jarrell, highlight stories about Julio, highlight stories about Jordan, and T Jordan and Julio both passed away, right? Wow. But the thing is, through their mothers and through what we kind of built together, yeah. their stories live on yes. to, you know, that inspires someone else to get through, um, make can it could be cancer, it could be going through anything, but yeah. it's something that will inspire people to say, you know what, if they can do, if they can be going through this turmoil and still fight, I have a little bit of fight left too. Absolutely. You know, and I, didn't know that it was going to be what it is. Yeah. I'm just, like you told me, a ve you're a vessel. That's I'm it. just a vessel and I'm trying to be obedient as possible. Absolutely. Right. Yep. So are you intentional about finding stories to shape the vision behind all dreams? Or is it really by happenstance? That's a great question. <laughs> I, I love everything organic, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. I don't want to have a, a, a large, a huge brand mm -hmm. and people think that they can just get something. I would rather it be organic. I would rather, because all of the children that we've been doing has been organically yeah. met. I don't, you know, that, and that's how I want it to continue, you know, with the vision of going around the world meeting dreamers and creating collections inspired by their dream, dropping that collection and supporting their dream ongoing. And if it's a person that's a baseball player, yeah, we might support him, um, but we also can support other baseball players, other people that want to be baseball players with that same collection. We just have to sell yeah. more and more, you know, more and more clothes. So, you know, I'm not bashful about making money. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> right? you know, we want to make a absolutely. lot of money, right? Yeah. And we want to be able to give the money back right. and continue to support, create the ecosystem of dreamers. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's necessary. You know, it's a source, it's a resource, right. and it's necessary in order for dreams and purpose to move forward. Absolutely. So when you take these visions and dreams mm -hmm. so that people can understand how this exactly okay. works. Okay. You have an interaction with a child mm -hmm. and you want their dreams to come true. Mm -hmm. You create product around that, that child and that Absolutely. vision and the proceeds from that mm -hmm. goes back into funding this child's dream. Absolutely. Ab Absolutely. That's amazing. Absolutely. It, it, and it comes from a pain point, right? I yep. think, you know, it comes from a pain point. I wanted somebody to support my dream. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's a pain point. It's like, Absolutely. yo, like, yo, like that. I wish somebody showed, you know. Yeah. It, 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 and all of the time, it's not necessarily about money. It could be interest. True. I seen a kid yesterday say, what's your dream? He yeah. lit up. Wow. Telling me his dream, right? Yeah. So, so when someone shows interest, 
that's supporting their dream. Yes, that's good. Now, when that's you good. add on actual funding support, it, it just goes bigger. So yeah, so absolutely, like you were saying, it does. It's um, we create product around that, and it goes to supporting their actual dream because all we should be doing, mm. <laughs> all we should be doing, is chasing our dreams and being intentional about our, about going after our dreams, working hard, believing in ourselves, and believing in our dreams, and putting contribution. If if mo most people did that, this world would be. It wouldn't be so. Um, I don't want to say the world is bad, but Jaded, it, yeah, yeah you know, exactly. Yeah. If you know, if we put that energy in, yeah, and we believed in ourselves, mm -hmm. and we just like, oh, I want to just, I want to go after what I want to do. We only get one time through this place. That's it. It's no redos. That's it. <laughs> right. This is not so dress why rehearsal. not? Yeah, and and the thing is, it's like the best teacher in the world is a person living out their dreams. That's the best teacher. Amen. No college, no Amen. course. You Amen. know, we spend lots of money investing into courses yeah. to be quote unquote approved and certified by the world. Right. But right. when you have somebody right. who organically said, I'm going to drop everything that's materialistic. Right. I'm going to move internationally. Right. I'm going to create a life around my purpose so it will free up me having to give back to the very thing I believe in. And then you turn around and years later and just through the course of building this organization, you are meeting people. And then when you ask them, what's your dream? And that conversation starts. Right. Guess what? You just turn somebody else into a believer because they're now talking to a person right. who is not only the founder of this amazing organization, All Dreams, but they're living it. Right. And that's a teacher to the very person that you're connecting to. That's igniting a fire, like you said, there's not even no money involved. Yeah, that's yeah. You're literally Sick. igniting the fire in people, their right. spirits to say, hey, I really need to reconsider looking back at the thing that I'm too scared to do. Thank you so much. I, I, I thank you so much for, for understanding this, you know, this, this vision. You know, I, and I really, really appreciate that. Like, like what you just said is like, crazy <laughs> like I really really appreciate you for understanding that that vision in itself um because yeah that's exactly what it, it is takes so, heart. So exactly what it is I'm exactly telling you I I understand it because I have met people like you and there's a part of me that is still scared yeah so when I meet when I meet people like you I feel like I'm facing my fear in a sense Right. of like literally stepping out and doing that other thing that I don't talk about, that other right. thing that's a chapter in my book of life yeah. that I'm not ready to write yet. And I think that's what your organization also is doing for people. Yeah. Um, popping up the way you did and me meeting you and you, you literally having conversations with people, that's the exact same way I approach people when I do my podcast. Yeah. My podcast is on my shoulders and my sleeves every time I go out right. because right. I really grow and learn from having dope conversations with dope people. And the only way you can do that is if you open your mouth and you talk and yeah, you interact yeah. and you engage and connecting with you and meeting you ignited something in me. And I didn't even hear your full story mm -hmm. when we did talk, but it was enough for me to say, this needs a vessel to get out. And a lot yeah. of times people just don't, you know, it's a lot of noise it's on social noise. media platforms. Such a, it's such a lot of noise. It's a lot of noise. So noise. sometimes it just take a vessel to kind of push it out to another avenue and it right. latch on to somebody in my, in my flow that might not be in your flow and vice versa. Right. So that's really right. the power when you can utilize the tool to push a vision in a great way. It's a great, it's a powerful, it, it really will blow your mind how it can reach people that you can't even reach. Right. So right. I, I just appreciate that. I appreciate yes. you taking the time to share that your product, like, okay, this was the, the shirt that I actually saw yeah, when yeah. I met you. That's the, that's the, that's the peach. This, <laughs> <laughs> that's the peach. So this elephant has a name. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah. and tell us about Lee. So this Lee. is Lee, right? Lee, Lee the elephant. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah Lee the elephant. Um, so uh, it's, it's no, 
like huge thing like his name is not Carlton <laughs> right <laughs> it, it was just you know I just I just felt Lee was a good a good name where people didn't know whether the elephant was white or black <laughs> <laughs> so Lee is one of those names right, right? yeah so yeah people wouldn't make I didn't want to name the the elephant Marquand <laughs> I didn't want to name the elephant. What's a, a white guy's name? I don't know. Steve. Gary. Uh, yeah, right. Jim. Yeah. So I just wanted something that was, you know, that was unbiased. And I also I had a female elephant. Her, her name was Leah. Okay. So it, was, so it was like Lee and Leah or whatever. But Lee, yeah. I was like, to do all all the female stuff to continue. Maybe one day I would. Sure. To do more. But yeah, yeah Lee, Lee the elephant, and he also he always he's always gonna have shades on. Okay. Whether they're you know whether they're aviator shades or whether they're <laughs> Ray Bans or he's always gonna have shades. Okay. Um, because shades are cool. Yeah, they are. So yeah, his name is Lee the elephant, and I want to make him an iconic figure. Dope. Yeah. And so on the sleeves mm -hmm. of this beautiful hoodie. Yeah. So is support all dreams. We want you know because we want to highlight the message that you know the message is that we are you know the, the vision and the goal is to support dreamers worldwide right and we always come are going to come back to that yeah the stories that we tell we all you know are the elephant in the room yeah but we come back to support all dreams mm. all of them it's you know I you know it. all all dreams we all have an inner dreamer in us mm -hmm. so we're supporting all dreams and my you know how big i think it can go is colossal yeah. right where dreams are being supported in this ecosystem nice yeah so how can people get in contact with you or support the vision be yeah. behind all dreams yeah sure thank you um they can support the vision by going to follow us on instagram yeah support all dreams okay uh, the website is supportalldreams.org. Nice. Okay. And my personal Instagram is I am he creates and buy things and you will see the different uh, young people that are dreamers that you can actually support like Oscar. Uh, he's a surfer from Colombia and his collection we made for him is All Dreams Surf Club that supports Oscar and other uh, other surfers. Um, this one right here, real fast, I want to yeah, show you this. Absolutely. So this is a, uh, a shirt called All Dream Sluggers. Yeah, show that to the camera. So All so, Dream Sluggers. Yeah. So it's All Dream Sluggers, and this was made... I'm going to open it up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So nice. you have the slugger nice. on the front, and then you have uh, on the back, you have All Dream Sluggers. You know, of course you have Lee, he's, ba he's batting. But this was, this shirt was specifically made and inspired by a kid named Miguel and mm. um, his dream is to to make it to play baseball and to support his mother right mm. and on the website you can you'll see different different young people whether it's the football club or whether it's dream skate company this is another one this is uh, inspired by a kid named Harleen that's a skater nice. he's like one of the one of the dopest skaters in Colombia wow. he, like he has his own following right okay. and we, you know I met him and I met him playing basketball like wow on just you know walking past we played basketball and I found okay. out he was a skater but yeah dream skate company is for Harleen so like again we want to we want to meet more and just yeah. drop collections. So my vision, we drop a collection every single week where a dreamer can be supported, right? Oh, just dope it. things. Yeah. If a kid wants to be an astronaut, right? we'll make a collection inspired by that and support that dream. Dang, that's good. That's, you know, and, you know, that's, I that's, what, I, that's what I want it to be. So yeah. if you're the people that are dreamers, yeah. that have a dream, let's, we can collab. Like, what's your dream? Yeah. You know, what, what's, your, what's, your, what's your Well, dream? taking this podcast to a whole nother level, being able to, to interview, you know, hierarchies of kings and, and you know, national known figures and, right. you know, literally finding out through these, you know, in, exploding my platform to be able to then help countries and, and then trickle all the way down. If right. I can get interviews with the top, then that trickles down. That would be phenomenal to wake up every day 
and talk to dope people and have dope conversations. That's a dream of mine. That's and you're doing it. You're doing it. And people should support that dream, right? Right. And that's that's what I want to put into the world. That's what I want. That's how can how can people support your as you say, look, this is my dream and you put it out into the world. Well now people know. How yeah. can they support that dream? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's what I want to put into the world for yeah. Everybody, that's my contribution to the world. That's what I want it to be. And it's not just mine. It's God is, like I said, yeah. putting this in me. Absolutely. And that's, you, you know, that's, it doesn't, it, that's, where, that's where it goes. I like this one too, Hassan. Okay. So this, this shirt here, this is an, another one of the shirts that you yeah. can get off the website. Abs yeah. So it's We All Have Dreams, which all have literally dreams. is what you were talking about. Yeah, we all have dreams. We all have dreams. Yeah, yeah, we all have dreams. Uh, I think that kind of sums up what it is. Yeah, we That's we right. do. We all we all we have all dreams. Do. And I uh, just want to say one one more thing about the movie that I did about those five about sure, those five yeah. kids. So yeah. It's called We All Have Dreams. Okay. And and it's about their story and the journey and trying to get them and tell their stories and bring their stories to the world. So nice. people should watch that as well. Oh yeah, y'all <laughs> please check it out. Well, yeah. listen, it's been my absolute honor and pleasure you so much. having you on and allowing you to tell your story. Thank you so much. So, I so appreciate it. Hassan, thank you for uh, the interview and um, we will definitely do everything we can so that people can know about all dreams. Thank you so much. So y'all give it up for Hassan. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you.